everyone, I'm Joy. In the previous video, Andy showed us some terrific fish specimens. One specimen he didn't mention, which we are very lucky to have in our collection, is a coelacanth. This fascinating fish species was once thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago during the end Cretaceous mass extinction event. But in 1938, a young South African museum curator named Marjorie Courtney Latimer had her hands on the first non-fossilized specimen. She befriended a local trawler fisherman and got a first look at any catch brought into the port. The coelacanth was certainly unusual. This discovery rocked the world of the natural sciences because up until that point, the only previously known coelacanth were preserved as fossils. Since 1938, we've learned a lot more about coelacanths. In prehistoric times, coelacanths were a large group of fishes with around 90 different species distributed around the world. However, there are only two living species that exist today, which are the West Indian Ocean coelacanth and the Indonesian coelacanth. The West Indian Ocean species is found in distinct populations near South Africa, Madagascar, Kenya, and the Comoro Islands off the east coast of Africa, while the Indonesian species lives in the ocean near Sulawesi, Indonesia. These fishes can live up to 60 years in the wild, are carnivorous, and can grow to be longer than 6 feet, and they can weigh up to 200 pounds. Unfortunately, these fishes are critically endangered and now face extinction after surviving for 400 million years. Threats include habitat destruction, ocean pollution, and being accidentally caught by fishermen. Coelacanths have many unusual adaptations. One particular unique adaptation is the rostral organ in their snout. It's part of their electrosensory system, this organ has three sensory canals that sit directly in front of the coelacanth's mouth, which scientists hypothesize helps them ingest food. Coelacanths are nocturnal predators, meaning that they hunt for food at night. They often drift with the ocean current right above the seafloor. Sometimes in ocean caves, they drift in a vertical headstand position. Keeping their snout right above the seafloor allows their rostral organ to pick up weak electric fields from their prey, such as squid and octopus. When a coelacanth goes to eat, it draws in large volumes of water through a feeding mechanism called suction inhalation. They can engulf prey from up to 20 centimeters away from their mouth within less than one second. Scientists consider other characteristics of the coelacanth, in particular their lobed fins, to represent a step in the evolution of life in the ocean to life on land. Though recent studies have shown that lungfish are more closely related to tetrapods, which are four-legged land animals, coelacanths give us important clues about the evolution of animal mobility. This is because coelacanths have four fleshy lobe fins that have the bony structure of a hand and move as four-legged animals move on land. An additional adaptation that coelacanths have is that they lack a backbone and instead have a notochord, which is a pressurized oil-filled tube that essentially serves the same purpose as a backbone. This is almost like a window back in the evolutionary time because all higher level vertebrates, including humans, start out with a notochord that develops into a vertebral column, which is a backbone. Coelacanths are really fascinating animals, and I hope that you liked learning about them with me. To help you remember about these special lobed fin fishes, I created a fun connect the dots activity for you to try at home. If you picked up a science kit from the museum last weekend, you can find this connect the dots activity in your kit, or you can download it from our science kits webpage. Enjoy!